You're watching Famous Dave. And welcome back to the Short Vol Show. Yeah, so I'm watching um, the streams from everybody from these meme stocks and the level of self-delusion and just crazy explanations for why this stuff is going lower are just uh, amazing. I think for a lot of these people, the world started the day GameStop first went up and everything else is like the aftermath of that. And, you know, any trade in the world that's significant happened uh, since GameStop uh, went up last, like, what was it, January or February. I found one particular gentleman who just drove me absolutely crazy, and he's a, a elder gentleman, and y you think that maybe, you know, somebody who has a few years on them would have a little bit more sense, but apparently that's not the case. <laughs> and I I feel bad because I don't usually let this stuff, like, get under my skin or bug me and I kind of left this guy a nasty comment and I regret doing so because there's n there's enough nasty people online there's no reason for me to add to it um, but I just I felt I got the feeling that this guy is just leading all these other people like off a cliff so let's look at this video um, I'm probably gonna get uh, you know demonetized for showing him but I, I don't care about that but let's let's look at this guy's video for a second here and then I'm going to get on to the meat of the... Actually, let's do the meat of this first so that if you don't want to watch that end part, you can come back and watch it, or you can you can leave. But let's get to the meat of this whole thing, what I wanted to talk about. There is a um, section under Thinkorswim, which is the brokerage account uh, software that I use, that has live news. And when I pulled up live news on GameStop recently, I saw this post that says analyzing GameStop's unusual options activity and uh, here's the post here if you want you could fast fr fr freeze it and read it but it says um, Uh, on Wednesday, shares of GameStop saw unusual options activity. After the alert, the stock price moved down to 172.06. Um, sentiment bullish. Option type sweep trade type put strike price 170 volume 2220 open interest 2221 now i don't entirely blame think or swim for this although i blame them mostly uh, <laughs> because it's benzinga that does these options alert however there's somebody who's curating these things and who's saying oh that's probably a good one to give people uh and you know, to this particular one's credit, at least it's like not like a ten lot. Sometimes it will be like a like a fifty lot or something, something really so small that just would not have any influence on anything ever. But anyway, um, okay, so this is a put that expires in two days, right? Um, the one seventy put. So uh, stock this morning opened uh, 179 so slightly out of the money put we could say however um, not super far out of the money almost at the money so we could consider this maybe like a 35 to a 40 delta put and by by that I mean that um, each of these puts represents around um, you know has the directional pull of about 30 to 35 shares of stock so if you've got um, 2,200 of them, that's a lot, right? That's a lot of short. Um, and uh, they're saying that somebody came in and bought these puts. Now, that trade on its own is uh, a bet that the stock is going down. Let me just make sure that this may, because it's not making sense to me here. GameStop, on Wednesday, share so after the options alert, sentiment bullish. Trade put strike open interest height of a contract. I'm just seeing if it says if they bought it or sold it. But you know, in the end, one person's buying them and one person's selling them, right? So the transaction in overall is neutral because you know pe the people who buy it have to hedge it, and so do the people who sell it. Um, let's see what it says here. It says. Uh, 
options are bullish when a call is purchased or or a put is sold. So I think they're they're saying these puts were sold. So um because they're saying it's bullish. So let's let's just assume for our discussion here that they, they sold these 2,200 puts. Now, something should have been completely obvious to the writer of this uh, particular thing, right? This particular uh, news story. When you've got, and here it is right here, open interest, okay? 2,221 is the open interest, 2,000. 221. The volume of this trade was 2,220. Do these look similar to you? Am I crazy or do these look like similar, right? And the person's selling. So it would stand to reason, it would be a fairly good guess that this is a closing order, that at some point this person bought these puts a, a while ago and now they're coming in right before expiration or near expiration and they're closing out the trade, right? As people do before expiration. And um, you would think that the person who put together this uh, article um, would have, um, you know, kind of come up with the idea that may gee, maybe possibly the person's closing the out of position that they opened before, right? Because it's the same exact number. So when you see something like this, now if we, l let's look at the other strikes in this stock because there's not a huge lot. There's very many strikes, right? So there's not that much volume per strike. But let's look at July, for example, here, and just look at the volume in different strikes here for a second. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the top here of my page where I have this. Let me see if I can pull this down so you can see this better. My screen here. At the middle top of the page, I can pull, pull down this menu and change what it shows. And I'm changing it to volume open interest so we can see the open interest. Okay, so here we've got, and we'll go to the strike mentions. Here's 170, right? As they said before correctly, open interest, 2221. Now, 3,000 have traded today, right? So, um, and look at all these other strikes, 3,000. A lot's trading, right? That makes sense, right? Before expiration, stocks moving around. But, um, you know, the first trade of the day comes in and it's exactly the open interest besides one contract, right? You'd have to at least have some sort of thought in your head at some point that, gee, maybe they're closing out the trade that they bought before. Because if the open interest is exactly the same as the number of contracts traded off by one contract, that would probably come into your mind. But no, it didn't. And so... A, that's, that's the first thing wrong with this thing. B, uh, an options trade by itself doesn't really tell you much because you don't know what the person's position is on or how they're hedging them or if they're hedging them at all. Now, in this case, if what looks to be the case, usually I think it's called Occam's Law or something like that where the, the most simple explanation is probably the right explanation. It looks in this case like somebody bought these puts before and now they're coming to close them out right before expiration, before their value completely goes to dust, right? Um, so here's the stock um, over the last, I think that's year. Let me just back it out to like, let's say uh, 180 days, right? So if somebody bought these puts, it looks like since the open interest is exactly the same as a number that they came in and sold back, that somebody bought these puts when the stock was higher. They rode them down, made some money on them, and now right before expiration, they're selling them back out. So that trade in itself does not mean the stock's going to get pulled in one direction or another. It, in fact, means that uh, the people are getting out of their short. They're covering their short, right? They were short by buying puts. Now they sold the puts back out and they're covering their short. So that doesn't mean that the person thinks the stock's going way lower. It means the person uh, is actually covering their short. I in other words, um, thinks the stock is no longer going to, I don't know what they think, but you could, you could extrapolate. They mean they don't think the stock's going to go down farther than this. But in, in this case, I just think it's close to expiration. And they're getting out of their they're getting out of their position while their puts are still worth something because you know if the stock gets all the way down to uh, 
if it, it, the stock could go right to strike and then expire, the puts could expire worthless. So in this case, at least they're getting some money out of their puts, and um, and thus it's not a bullish or bearish indicator here. It's just a trade. Now we don't know if this guy turned around and sold this put and bought another put in next month, right? He could have come around and said, oh, these puts are about to expire. There's two days till expiration. I'm going to sell these ones out and buy some in another month. I'm going to roll them. In that case, it's not bullish or bearish, right? It's, it's pretty neutral. They're just rolling their position out. The other point that I continue to make is that if you've got someone coming in and selling a bunch of puts, there's another person on the other side buying those puts. And if you buy a bunch of puts, that gets you very short. And so what are you going to do against it? You're going to buy the stock, right? On the other hand, um, if this person who traded these other puts was doing a delta neutral trade, then when he sells his puts out, he's, gonna, he's going to um, sell any long stock he had against them. Because uh, if somebody buys puts, a lot of times they buy stock against them to turn it into some sort of straddle. So you've got uh, trade both ways based on this trade. There's never much of a way to know from an individual trade what the person is thinking or what their position is. Now, there are certain trades where, okay, if somebody buys way out of the money puts, then maybe they're making a long shot bet that the stock's going to go down. Or if they buy way out of the money calls, then maybe they're making a, a bet that the stock's going up. But it also could be just that they are um, hedging risk that's far out. They're buying their wings, so to speak. Uh, we don't know. But once again, this... Um, this analysis by Thinkorswim or Benzinga of options activity is deceptive and confusing, and it doesn't help at all. <laughs> I, and I know it's very easy to come online and tear somebody else down. It's much harder to, um, you know, produce content yourself or whatnot. But I just think that these um, options trades are not helpful. You could say just simply a large trade happened, these puts traded, period and not try to say, look, well, this is bullish or bearish, because it's not on the face of itself. You can't tell if it's bullish or bearish. You don't know the person's position. You don't know what they're doing against it, period. Um, it kind of goes along with all that stuff with, like, trying to, when, they, when people try to say, oh, the market makers all have this position based on because I think that somebody came in and did this. You don't really know. You don't know all the trades. It's it's very hard in this world of like multiple listing, multiple exchanges to know what someone else's position is or even to kind of try to figure it out by piecing together different trades. You know, when there was a, a pit, when there, uh, when there was a pit that only, the only options in the stock traded in the world in one pit and it's a small stock and you could see every trade that's actually happened on a public exchange, then maybe you could put something together. But these days, so much going on, there's no way to be able to figure it out. Okay, so now let's look at this uh, video, which uh, I just kind of found hilarious. Okay, so here it is. Okay, so ANC, GME, the market maker is unmade. And first of all, I, I think he means AMC, not ANC. But this guy comes on and he's like, listen to this stuff. It's, it's delusional. It should, this should be saved for history. It should be in the National Archives. I think we had a bit of a example of who these people are today, which is not anything surprising. We know how they are. Here's what I would like you to do now. Um, take the number 500. Let's pretend you have 500 shares, no matter whether you have more or less than that. And multiply that by a thousand. And then take 500 shares and multiply it by 40, which is pretty much rounded off what they got today. And you'll see that 500 times a thousand equals $500,000, which in some countries is considered a half a million. Ours, I think. Okay. <laughs> And then you can do the 500 times 40, which is today, and that's $2,000. Why, that's ridiculous. We deserve a heck of a lot more than that for all this work we put in, right? Yeah, so just so you know, because $1,000, 
is what we figure is the very least this is going to be per share. That's the so very first least. First of all, 500 times 40 okay. is $20,000, not $2,000. So that's pretty in I don't know to only back take back. like 30% of the buys and put them up there and then put the others aside. Yes, that's cheating. Yes, that's illegal. Yes, that's how they're running this ship. You know, it's just incredible. That's why we're seeing all their fake shares, their fake sell shares, take this down every day. And we actually did a pretty good job keeping it up as high as we did today with all this interference on their part. Um, <clears throat> You know what the trip is supposed to be, what they're trying to do, right? Okay. I'll explain it once more, but maybe you already know. I don't know. They're trying to bring it down to, they already found out that we won't run, we won't take off, so they, they've given up hope on that. But they want to bring it down to the 30s, and that way they can buy up <clears throat> excuse me, buy up a lot of shares, they think. <laughs> I don't think any are for sale, but that's what they're thinking. Um, and they can do some covering. And then the next thing they're going to try to do is they're going to try to let it bump up to a certain number. Let us just say it's, they're going to let it bump up to 150. Because that way they figure a lot of you people will sell and they'll just scrape you out. I mean, they'll, be, they'll be gone with you and they'll also pick up your shares, okay? All right, so what is this guy talking about here? Uh, so people who are short want are selling more of the stock so it will go down and then they're going to buy it when it's lower. Okay, so that doesn't sound so evil, first of all, if somebody sells it higher and wants to buy it lower. But the second part... I think he's talking about AMC and saying that people are going to take the price. Then they're going to people are going to manipulate the price of AMC up to one hundred and sixty dollars, and then everybody will sell. But he's not going to sell there because that would be too cheap to sell it. Why would someone who was short it try to make the price of AMC go up to one hundred and fifty dollars? Right now it's thirty five dollars. Since this guy's video came out, by the way, this has gone down like another five bucks. But I just don't understand. Why isn't the simplest solution the most likely, which is that if it goes down, people are selling shares? Why is that not an acceptable explanation for why something is going down? I, I, in my mind, look at this up move this stock made. It made this huge rip up, right? That's not uh, a quote-unquote normal move up, right? That is a, like a big hype move up. And... And uh, thus, not as sustainable as if something's slowly building, right? And so, it, 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 it makes perfect sense that after this big rip up, that it would pull back. But in this guy's mind, uh, everything's a conspiracy. And he's, he's uh, perpetuating this. And a lot of people are watching. A lot more people have watched this guy than watched me. Look, he's got 5,900 view, views on this video alone, right? And there's one down vote. And a thousand upvotes on this. Nobody else thinks that there's something strange about what this guy's talking about. We we already beat them. Now they flounder. Now he's talking about a stock, mind you, that in the last uh, month has lost fif over 50% of its value. So if you're long it, how did you beat them? I don't understand. And why, you know, it, the responsible thing to do would be to say, uh... You know, that's great that this m we've got this great move up. Hopefully you made some great money. Hopefully, you know, you, you, you kind of uh, have kind of slowly moved out of your position or, uh, or taken some profits. Uh, and uh, congrats to everybody. Instead, it's like every downtick, he gets angry. And he's like, this is a conspiracy. And this thing, it wasn't meant to. I, I think in these people's minds, this, this huge move up is just not enough. They think that for some reason this is going to go 
higher the, or the, this should quote unquote go higher and higher now i would advise anybody who's trading the stock market get out of your mind what should happen because the stock market it doesn't listen to what you want it to happen ever <laughs> and that's not just if you're trading meme stocks it's if you're trading anything so um be prepared to be frustrated because that's what trading is all about and um these people get angry i once again i feel bad because i let a person another person get to me uh on twitter yesterday this guy was quoting a cpa who and let's see he's probably still got a bunch of things after me because but let's see if we can find this guy uh this guy um so he puts up this this quote um, it has to go, and this is from some CPA, and I believe they're talking about, yeah, GameStop again. If the hedges drop us down to the 30s, then pop it back to 100, you'll have the diamond hands to hold for the next dip. I'm not selling for less than six figures. Who's with me? So this guy's saying that uh, GameStop, he's not selling for less than six figures. So does that mean GameStop has to go to, or I'm sorry, AMC, excuse me. Does that mean AMC has to go to, uh, a hundred thousand dollars or does that mean he's account his account needs to go to a hundred thousand dollars i'm not sure but um regardless uh so he's quoting this guy who's with me amc day um if the hedges drop this down to 30s and then pop it back to 100 will you have the diamond hands to hold for the next dip uh, so this guy says it has to go higher for retail to sell it's up to the shorts to provide proper bids now, why does it have to go higher for retail to sell? It, it seems to me like people can sell the stock whenever they want to, right? And if it starts moving lower, some people are going to be like, I'm just going to take my profits and get out, right? I mean, I'd rather have some of my money left than some imaginary person on Reddit thinks I'm cool, right? You can be the coolest guy in the world, but if you don't have any money left, it, it it's kind of better to be... Th person that they don't think is so cool but you've got the money um trying to scare people into selling by dropping below 40 is not going to work uh, it's it's interesting to me how so much power is assigned to this imaginary person who moves the price around trying to get people to sell by raising the price might work for people tired of waiting so it's it it's almost like here's the here's the uh the scenario for people for for these guys is that there's a bunch of people short this stock and you have to do some they have to figure out some way and these people that are short the stock the only way they can get the stock back is if they convince these reddit people to give them their shares uh, not that they can just go out in the in the market and just buy the stock, right? Right, right now you can go into AMC and you can buy the stock. The offer is thirty five seventy nine. You could buy it right now, but in this guy's mind, no, you couldn't buy it right now. There's no offer. You'd have to convince one of his buddies on Reddit to sell you his shares. And so, how do you do that? Do you lower the price? Do you raise the price? And this guy says, I suspect many are solidly set for five hundred to a thousand dollars minimum. Minimum, right? Minimum. Even though this thing has already made this huge move up, th this totally unrealistic expectations are being set here. Uh, here's the stock price for the last three years. Now, wh where from that chart do you get $500 to, to $1,000 minimum, right? I could see don't want to sell it for less than ten dollars minimum right this tr this was trading a dollar 91 at the beginning of this year a dollar 91 all right let's go back to this because um i haven't gotten to my biggest point here and if it gets that high the final price could go considerably higher it's just a question of how successful citadel is is getting people to sell early now this is another assumption this guy's making that citadel is on the other side of all trades now in reality we don't know if citadel is um short long or or has no position 
So my thought was like, let's take a mathematical approach to this. Let's take a look at the delta of, an, of the highest option we can find on the screen. Let's give this guy the benefit of the doubt and give him the longest time possible for this to go to his imaginary number. So if we go out two years, we pick the highest option on the screen. This probably isn't going to be a great example, but... So this is, this is, um, if we were to, t to take the highest option on the screen, which is only $145, I, I hate to tell that guy because he's looking for 1000 or 500 and it gives uh, f two years out, for 550 days out, it gives the probability of this going to 145, a 40% probability, and that's uh, due to there being a lot of time. Let's see if any of these options that expire a little sooner are higher up. Because 40 is a pretty high delta, but that's just because there's a lot of time till then, right? And anything could happen, really. W and this stock has relatively high volatility at 170 something. But so by next December, this being above 145, there's a 24% chance according to the options, right? Um, now there's no option that's a 500, right? It only goes up to 145, but it's assigning. Uh, a probability of somewhere between 25 and 40 percent that this could get to 145 in the next year, right? Um, which is pretty much higher than I would have suspected. Uh, by the end of August, it gives us an 8 percent chance of going to 145. Now, see how I'm doing this? I'm looking at the delta of the call option for the the 145 strike in different months. And right here, the delta is 8. That means there's an 8 percent chance of this 145 strike option expiring in the money. And the reason for this is just if you're taking the volatility level, which is 206, and you're plugging that into the Black and Scholes model, it outcomes 8% chance, right? So according to these guys, it's you know more likely than not that this is going to 500, which, would, which in my mind would mean, well, the 145 option, you know, that's in the bag. But not so according to the option screen. So this is what I wrote back to him. If this guy is really a CFA, he's certainly a bit confused about how the stock market works. Be realistic in your goals. Six figures is not realistic. The options market tells us that is incredibly unlikely. I trust the market more than someone online. And this guy says, he doesn't say anything about six figures. Last time I checked, the market maker set the options. And uh, Exadel is the market maker, so go F yourself. Now, and, uh, oh, and, and four people like that comment. Now, why would you... Why would you like publicly curse out somebody who you know nothing about, a total stranger, online? Um, there's a certain level of, of anger here, right? And I I understand the the emotion and frustration when your stock. I mean, how much was it down? It was down like ten percent yesterday. So there's some frustration going on there. But um, what my boss, what my mentors taught me when stuff is going against you and there's frustration. The, the recommended uh, thing to do was s something. Do something, right? Do something with your position. Uh, you're long. It's going against you. Do something. Instead of going online and, you know, cursing out strangers, <laughs> that's not going to help your, your finances. Do something. So by do something, I mean uh, pare back your position some somehow if if it's going against you you're losing money pare back your position somehow my recommendation in somebody who's in a situation where they're long a stock and it's going heavily against them my recommendation is to do something by the end of the day whether it's sell 10 percent i would recommend sell half but uh sell 10 percent sell something do something so at least at the end of the day you can say i did something towards improving the situation I'm in. I'm not going to come in tomorrow, and if the same thing happens, I'm in the same shape. I've, I've, I've uh, bettered my situation to some extent. And actually, you know, when we look at this stock, today it's down another 10%. I mean, it's come back a little bit today, but uh, look at it. It's in free fall right now, right? So um, for me, as a, as a trading professional, it's, it's 
incredibly responsible for me as a teacher to come on when there's a stock that's in free fall like this one is and come in there and tell people, oh, it's not really in free fall. This is just, uh, don't look at the screen. <laughs> it's actually going to go way higher. Uh, this is just manipulation. And, you know, and the other point is, if you really believe that it's being manipulated that much, then maybe you shouldn't have your money in there, right? Because if something's being manipulated that much and they can screw you that much, why are you, why are you risking your money with it if you really feel that way? So um, that's a question that I will leave open that you can answer for yourself. Um, but yeah, look, AMC and Freefall, pretty much. I mean, does it look like this is the place where it's going to stop? I mean, it doesn't really, right? It looks like the base is around like $10 or something. Now, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. It could go straight up from here, certainly. But I think if, you know, if, if I was... Now, this guy obviously is not like a professional educator or teaches people about trading or something, but uh, if he was, it, it would be irresponsible to come on and tell people like with this stock chart that, you know, no, it's not really going down. Your eyes are deceiving you and come up with all these strange like math and figures. I think he's referring to, he thinks that there's volume going on that's not being showed that there's buyers out there. But I don't know what he's thinking. It, you know, the, the stock market is, I know there's a lot of sneaky stuff that goes on, but it is regulated to some extent. It's not just like uh, the wi complete Wild West out there. Anyway, so there's the AMC chart. Um, my advice to people, if you're along it, uh, would be to uh, do something <laughs> because it doesn't seem to be going up anymore. And, I, you know, right? Am I really crazy to say that? Um, now, I'm not short this. I have no no uh, skin in the game, so to speak. But all these people coming on and just denying the fact that this is tanking, uh, it just speaks to somebody who's new to the market, who just doesn't, um, you know, hasn't been through this kind of thing before. So um, I don't know why people are following him. It's kind of like before. I, I used to notice all these people would follow people who said the market was going to crash. And my message that, no, the market's going to slowly probably move higher over time wasn't sexy, so people didn't want to hear that. But the people that came on and said, the market's definitely going to crash next week, got a million views. And I have one guest who I had on before uh, who came on and said exactly that. The market's going to crash, and it really didn't crash. And I don't think... I don't think that person talks to me anymore. And it's not, you know, the message isn't always sexy with the market. It's something of patience. And generally, markets trend slowly higher, right? There's fireworks from time to time, but generally, that's what happens. And um, and generally, stocks that, that rip to like 100, you know, 10 times or 100 times what they were worth a couple weeks ago, generally don't stay up there. I don't think any of this is controversial to really say, and um, in my mind, what's happening with people is they're still in this mode of, wow, this is great, this is going straight up, and they haven't adjusted yet to like, well, maybe it's not going straight up anymore, right? That's what I think is going on here. Um, as far as GME is concerned, I'm still short. I switched my short around uh, yesterday to, uh, instead of being short the 200, 190, that expires in 17 days. I rolled out, and actually now I'm short the 180, 170. So I've rolled it down, and um, it's still going lower. You know, I haven't covered any of it, and I'm just kind of hanging out here. We're off the lows of the day, but we'll see what happens. It's still trending lower, so I think I'm just going to leave the position being short for now. Um, you know, I come on here all the time when I'm losing money. In fact, I was losing money for like a year straight, and I came in every day, uh, and I'm not saying that I'm some sort of genius now that I happen to be making money for the last few weeks uh, at all. Um, but I am saying that it's irresponsible to come on when a stock is trending sharply lower and come up with just incredible, incredulous uh, reasons why uh, what you're seeing on the screen really isn't happening or something. Uh, so uh, there, there's my rant for the day. Thanks for watching again. I appreciate all the great comments from yesterday. And I love you guys. Even the bad comments I love um, because um, hopefully I've given you something to think about. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next 
episode of the Short Vol Show Live. You're watching Famous Games.